Hello, this is Mississauga Mayor Bonnie Crombie. Welcome to a special edition of Crombie Connects. We're hosting a Mississauga federal election debate, and we're one of the few cities nationwide who took up the Federation of Canadian Municipalities' call to host a local debate. The issues facing Mississauga are the issues facing the majority of Canadians. All roads to government run through Canada's sixth largest city. Welcome, and thank you for joining us. Thank you, Madam Mayor, and welcome to a special edition of Crombie Connects, the 2015 federal election. My name is Michael A. Charbon. Our debate today will be 60 minutes in length and focus on three main issues, transit and infrastructure, economic development, and affordable housing. Questions directed to the candidates during the debate will be asked by our community panel, and I'd like to introduce them to you now. First of all, Madam Mayor Bonnie Crombie. Second. Sheldon Leiba, Vice President, Network and Membership and Relations for the Ontario Chamber of Commerce. Anita Stalinga, Vice President, Community Investment with the United Way Peel. Party officials chose which Mississauga candidate would participate in this debate. So in alphabetical order, let me introduce to you our candidates for tonight's debate. First of all, Stella Ambler the Conservative Party candidate for Mississauga Lakeshore. Number two, Farine Khan, NDP candidate for Mississauga Center. Three, Peter Fonseca, Liberal Party candidate for Mississauga East, Cooksville. And four, Chris Hill, Green Party candidate for Mississauga Streetsville. Candidates, thank you very much for participating in this important debate. Uh, candidates will have uh, one minute for both opening and closing remarks, and you have 30 seconds uh, to respond to each question. Uh, this can be followed by a one-minute round-robin discussion where all candidates can participate, time allowing. Uh, throughout the debate, candidates will respond to questions in rotating alphabetical order, and as the moderator, I can direct candidates for a response. Uh, our questions were developed in large by our community panel in front of you here today. So let's get to our debate with a one-minute opening remark from each of our candidates, beginning with Stella Ambler. Uh, Conservative Party, Mississauga, Lakeshore. Good evening and thank you Mayor Crombie for hosting this debate tonight. I welcome the opportunity to represent all six terrific Conservative candidates in Mississauga to discuss the issues of concern for our city. Since elected, Mississauga Conservative MPs have been devoted to representing this city in Ottawa where we have delivered on our promises to lower taxes for all Canadians steer our economy through a time of global economic uncertainty, balance the federal budget, create jobs, keep Canadians safe, and deliver a strong and principled presence on the global stage. People tell us that they want a government that helps them out when they need it, and one that, in general, makes their lives just a little bit easier. You work hard for your money, and you should be able to keep more of it. So we are making targeted, practical investments in communities while also lowering taxes and balancing the budget. Keep this in mind over the next hour and ask yourself this simple question. Which leader has the best plan for the people of Mississauga? I think you'll find the answer is that only Prime Minister Harper and this Conservative government Thank you, Ms. That. Handler. Thank you. Uh, next, Peter Fonseca, Liberal Party, Mississauga East, Cooksville. Thank you. I'm the Liberal candidate for Mississauga East, Cooksville, and I'm very proud to represent our leader, Justin Trudeau, and our strong Mississauga team here tonight. I want to thank Mayor Crombie, Council, Rogers Cable, Michael Charbon, Sheldon Leiba, Anita Stalinga, and my fellow candidates uh, that are here today for making this important debate happen. The election's about our future, and Canadians know that better is always possible. They want real change, and only lib Liberals are offering a plan that will deliver growth and that works for everyone. We want to ensure that our city and its citizens have the tools and resources to grow and prosper. And that's why we're offering a three-point plan to grow our economy, to create jobs, to cut taxes for the middle class and improve the lives of seniors and help families succeed. We'll achieve these lofty goals by working together with the City of Mississauga and our partners 
like the Mississauga Board of Trade and the United Way that are with us here tonight. And I look forward Thank to you, the Mr. questions Monteca. from our panel. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next, Mr. Chris Hill from the Green Party, Mississauga, Streetsville. Hello, and uh, thank you, Mayor Crombie, for inviting us to be on your program tonight. We've witnessed the disintegration of our social safety net to the point where many Canadians, through no fault of their own, have been forced into unsafe, unhealthy living conditions. And so that's why I'm so glad that affordable housing is on the agenda for today's uh, discussion. Some people are on the streets. Others are barely getting by. Homelessness began to escalate during the 1990s with federal government cuts to social housing programs and cuts in income support programs by both the federal and provincial governments. As housing prices increased, even people working for minimum wage were increasingly unable to afford rental housing. If the people who need help are not supported, this puts a strain on everyone. Basic needs are not being met for a significant number of Canadians, and the gap between the rich and the poor is widening. The Green Party believes that our country has enough resources to care for all residents. Canada is the only country in the OECD without a housing strategy. A key commitment of the Green Party of Canada is to develop a national housing strategy through the Council Thank of you. Canadian Governments. Thank you, Mr. Hill. And now Farheen Khan, NDP, Mississauga Centre. Well, I'd like to first thank, uh, express my gratitude to Mayor Crombie, to the Mississauga Board of Trade, to Rogers TV, and to the United Way for hosting this critical debate tonight. Uh, my name is Farheen Khan, and I am the NDP MP candidate for Mississauga Centre. I was born and raised in Mississauga. I grew up in subsidized housing and went through and experienced poverty and food insecurity. Um, after many years of hard work, I've actually been able to manage million dollar budgets, people, and raise millions of dollars for both local and global charitable causes, and have had the privilege of working with the organizations like the United Way. I'm a results-oriented person, just like Tom Mulcair, and Tom Mulcair, the leader of the NDP, is a strong, principled leader who has a successful track record of, record of 38 years of public service. As I knock on doors in Mississauga, I have to tell you that most people are ready for change. Mississauga residents are unhappy with the broken promises and of being ignored. There are not enough reliable good jobs locally here in Mississauga. Affordable housing is, not, is, is a concern and, there's not, and, and our infrastructure is lacking. The Mississauga NDP and team you is ready to, to, take, uh, to take action and to be representative. Thank, thank you, you Ms. Kahn. Uh, thank you, candidates, uh, for your opening uh, statements. Let us now begin with the question portion of our debate. Our first question is on transit and infrastructure. And I ask on Madam Mayor Crommy for her question, please. Thank you, Michael. Candidates, the City of Mississauga initiated a business case study to develop a new rail route that will connect the CP line just west of Trafalgar with the already existing CN line that runs through Brampton. This new line will finally make way for all-day, two-way GO train service on both routes. We call it the missing link. Will your party commit to working with supportive municipalities to make this proposal a reality, including the funding for the missing link? Thank you, Mayor Crombie. Candidates, just a reminder, we have 30 seconds for your response, and we'll start with Peter Fonseca from the Liberal Party, Mississauga East, Cooksville. We understand just how, how much uh, that transit and congestion is costing our region. $11 billion every single year. And when we look at, uh, at partnering with the city around and the province around the, the missing link and, and being able to provide all day two-way go, th this is something that the, that the Liberal Party is, is behind. We are behind investing in transit. We have said that we will put $20 billion over the next 10 years into public transit. That is four times more that is in being invested today by the federal government. So yes, we and are. Thank you, Mr. Fonseca. We are on side. Thank you, Mr. Fonseca. Now, Chris Hill, Green Party, Mississauga Streetsville, please. Thirty seconds. Thank you. Yes, I read the, the story and the plan behind the missing link with great interest. Uh, I live not far from that CP rail line, and I do use the GO train on on occasion to get into downtown Toronto, and recognize that we've got a critical problem with mixed freight and passenger traffic, all using the Milton Line through Mississauga. And I believe the missing link would fit and complement the Green Party's national rail strategy quite handily. Thank you, Mr. Hill. Uh, Ms. Farheen Khan, NDP, Mississauga Centre, please. 30 seconds. Sure. So uh, the NDP is uh, committed absolutely to uh, introducing a new ministry actually called the Ministry of Urban Affairs. We are going to invest 
specifically uh, in infrastructure and transit, and specifically Tom Mulcair had a, uh, had a message from Ms. Mayor Crombie uh, a few weeks ago when he came here saying that we're open to being a partner with the, with the city. Specifically, we're going to invest in our better transit plan, which means that we'll have reliable, stable funding coming to the city, so then I'll make sure that Mississauga gets our fair share. Thank you, Ms. Kahn. Stella Ambler, Conservative Party, Mississauga Lakeshore. 30 seconds, please. Uh, from what I've seen, this project is the kind of practical project that makes a lot of sense. And if it can be shown to deliver real results for families and get people to and from work faster and to where they need to go, that's important to the economy. What we've done as a federal government is we've listened to the municipalities. When they told us they wanted uh, more from the gas tax, we doubled it, then we indexed it to inflation. Uh, and then we made it permanent as well. And so that creates funding for Mississauga and for the projects that uh, Mississauga thinks is important. And so this is obviously a good one. It's early days. And thank you, Ms. Uh, but thanks. Thank you very much. Open it up for a question if you want to talk about the missing link. One minute round robin. Uh, jump in as you will. Well, the clear difference between the Liberal Party and the other parties is the money will flow now. We want to make sure that these projects are not kicked down the road for two, three, five, ten years. And what we've said is we would run some modest deficits and invest in projects like this, projects that are important to our community, like transit. Sure, I'd like to say that uh, I don't believe that um, running a deficit is the right, uh, right option at this point. I mean, we definitely want to invest in infrastructure and support our municipalities, but it's important to not to leave burdens behind for our future okay, generations. Ms. Uh, you know, the Liberals really, their answer is generally to uh, throw billions of dollars and create deficits. So the only way to pay for that is through higher taxes. Uh, so we don't believe that's the way to go. We believe in working together with the municipalities and letting them decide what the transit right. priorities are. Thank you very much, candidates. Let's now switch gears and talk about economic development. And I ask uh, Sheldon Leiba for his question, please. Sheldon? Yes, uh, hello, candidates. Uh, manufacturing is a key driver of the national provincial and local economy here in Mississauga. Beyond its immediate economic impact, the sector is also a key driver of research and innovation. However, despite its size and its prominence, the industry continues to be challenged by global competition. What will your party do to support manufacturing? Mr. Leiba, thank you. Uh, we'll start off with Mr. Chris Hill, Green Party. Mississauga Streets will. 30 seconds, sir. Yes, the Green Party believes that actually the solution to uh, economic prosperity doesn't lie in individual efforts by individual cities and municipal governments, but uh, on the collective effort of the federal government, provincial governments, municipalities, First Nations, Métis, and Inuit communities as well, and what we would call a Council of Canadian Governments working together to bring all of Canada's strategic resources to improve investment and jobs in the Mississauga and Southern Ontario region. Thank you, Mr. Hill. Let's go to Farheen Khan, NDP Mississauga Centre, please. Great. Okay. So um, we actually have, we believe that um, manufacturing is very important for our economy. We've lost 400,000 jobs in manufacturing under the Conservative government at this time. Uh, and what we're committed to doing is actually introducing an innovation, innovative tax credit, which will specifically support manufacturing companies to do research and development. That's a very big piece for our, of our plan. And we also believe that we need to invest in small and medium-sized businesses. 78% of our jobs are created from small and medium-sized businesses. So we're going to reduce the small business tax rate from 11 to 9% as well. Thank you, Ms. Kahn. Stella Ambler, Conservative Party, Mississauga Lakeshore, 30 seconds, please. Our government has negotiated uh, 39 new trade agreements, so up from five when we took office, now at 44. Increased trade means jobs, jobs for Canadians. Uh, and so the audio, auto industry is a good example. 85% of autos are made, made in Canada are exported, and so expanded free trade is an opportunity for uh, the Canadian auto manufacturers. Uh, Ford in Oakville is a good example. Uh, many of those workers uh, live in Mississauga, and uh, the, those trade agreements provide access to uh, other countries. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Amber. And now Peter Fonseca, Liberal Party, Mississauga East, Cooksville. Well, we just talked about our plan for infrastructure and what the Liberal Party will be doing is investing in a number of types of infrastructure. Some is green infrastructure, will be water treatment facilities, and uh, some is uh, transit infrastructure where you'd have to build rail and trains, etc. All this helps our manufacturers here in, in our community. We're also investing $750 million in training, and that's to help a lot of our young workers and workers that are needed in the manufacturing sector. To, uh, to be a, to have those high skills to do advanced manufacturing here in our community. So these are the type of investments that we're making to make sure that our manufacturers are competitive. Thank you, Mr. Fonseca. I open this up uh, a minute if you wish to discuss. Yes, Ms. Adler? I think 
one of the reasons why business is attracted to Canada is because we have been lowering taxes for large businesses, small businesses. That reinvestment that they're able to do creates jobs. The results are clear. In August alone, we created 12,000 new Ms. jobs. Can jump in? Sure. Uh, well, I just wanted to remind uh, our, our, our uh, audience here that uh, you know, the reducing corporate taxes doesn't really help the economy. In fact, what we need to do is actually increase our corporate tax rate to what's an average of the G7. Mr. Hill, jump in. Yes, well, I think uh, the types of trade agreements that have been negotiated have not been advantageous for Canada. Signing us up into the Canada-China Canada Investment Treaty, which puts basically our country uh, at, at risk of lawsuits from the Chinese government until 2045 is not a good deal. The Trans-Pacific Partnership okay. is Mr. going Obama to impact our office. Yes, sector. the, uh, the, the Trans-Pacific uh, Partnership that we're talking about actually under the Conservative government, um, we know that Mr. Harper recently just spoke about the fact that it's going to affect the auto uh, and industry. And one last one, Mr. Fonseca. Go ahead. And the Conservative Harper government has the, has the worst economic record that we've seen in Canada since the 1930s. All right, good. Thank you very much, candidates. Uh, I thank you again, and let us move on now to the topic of affordable housing. And I ask Anita Stalinga for her question, please. Anita? Thank you. The severe shortage of affordable housing in Peel has created one of the longest wait lists for subsidized housing in Ontario. What is the role of the federal government in reducing homelessness and increasing access to affordable housing? So affordable housing. Uh, let's start with uh, Farine Khan, please, NDP. Mrs. Sagasana, 30 seconds for you, please. Sure. So we, we, the NDP is committed to support, I can actually speak to this personally because I've lived in uh, subsidized housing myself, um, and we are committed to uh, investing in supporting the, uh, developing the national housing strategy, something that the Liberal Party has actually cut a number of years ago and something that we haven't seen in m very much support from the Conservative Party. Uh, we're talking about actually introducing a bill called uh, uh, Bill C-400, which actually will um, ensure that uh, access to affordable, reliable housing is a right for all Mississauga residents and all Canadians. Thank you, Ms. Khan. Let's go to Stella Ambler, uh, Conservative Party, Mississauga, Lakeshore, please. Actually, our government uh, is invests heavily uh, in housing. The numbers are significant. I've taken a look at them. Uh, just last year, our minister responsible for this file signed an $800 million agreement with the province of Ontario for affordable housing. But, you know, the housing issue is about more than just subsidized social housing. It's about making housing more affordable for all Canadians. So let me be clear. We believe that the best housing strategy starts with creating jobs and helping families to be able to afford their own homes. Thank you, Ms. Ambler. Uh, Peter Fonseca, Liberal Party, Mississauga East Cooksville, sir. Well, the, the Harper Conservative governments have really failed to take leadership when it comes to uh, affordable housing. And uh, what the Liberals uh, have uh, said is that we will invest $20 billion over the next 10 years into affordable housing. Under the Conservatives, they're in the process right now of, of ending rent geared to income support for cooperatives and social housing. I had the opportunity to visit one of these cooperatives just recently. And, they, and it is the best community that you can ever find here in Mississauga. Everybody uh, living together, working together uh, to, uh, to make tho those homes in that community you, uh, vibrant Fonseca. for those uh, citizens. Thank you, Mr. Fonseca. Chris Mill. Uh, Chris Hill, I beg your pardon. Uh, Green Party, Mississauga Streetsville, please. Yes, the Green Party supports the delivery of social and cooperative housing dollars to provincial, territorial, and municipal governments through the traditional vehicle of the Canada Mortgage and Housing Corporation, CMHC. Greens will change the mandate of CMHC to include responsibility, as it once had, for affordable, non-market, and cooperative housing. We must dedicate funding to the cooperative housing sector to enable more affordable housing projects to proceed. Thank you, Mr. Hill. When we return, we will have our round robin. You're watching a special edition of Crommy Connects 2015 Federal Candidates Debate on Rogers TV. Back right after this. Welcome back to a special edition of Crombie Connects, the 215 uh, federal election debate. Uh, we knew when you left, we were talking about affordable housing, and we're now going to enter into our round, round robin segment. Uh, Ms. Ambler, you want to jump in on that? Yes, with regard to the CMHC program that was referred to, uh, it's actually a federal government program to pay mortgages, uh, and so it's not a cut. It's actually a way for the government to help Canadians afford their own home, which is the goal. So it's actually proof that our approach is working, helping families to realize the dream of home ownership. 
Well, I think it's uh, it's unfortunate that you know in this saga particularly, people can't afford to buy homes. So if there's incentives to buying homes, it's it's a problem. What we actually need is actually more affordable housing, um, particularly also subsidized housing to make sure that everyone has a place to live. Oh, when cooperative housing is working, you don't go off and cut it. What we're doing is also looking at other solutions, working with the private sector actually to uh, build affordable rental units. And we're going to take the GST off of the private sector. That's a $125 million investment to get the private sector building units. Well, the capital stock of social housing has been lacking in maintenance, and that's been a, a real problem. It's a prime target for energy retrofits. Our climate plan could revamp social housing first. Among other things, the Green Party supports a home energy retrofit program with the goal okay, thank you, Mr. of cutting Hill. building emissions. Thank you, candidates. Let's move on now to economic <coughs> development. I'd like to ask Sheldon Leiba for his question, please. The recession has taken its toll on public finances. Stimulus spending has driven the federal debt to rise by over $100 billion over the past 10 years to roughly $660 billion, while annual interest payments on that debt cost the federal government $30 billion. What is your party's fiscal management strategy and plan to deal with the federal debt? Thank you, Mr. Lava. Let's uh, start with Ms. Ambler, Conservative Party, please. Uh, during the recession of 2008-2009, uh, stimulus spending was required. So like many other countries in the world, uh, we took it upon ourselves to make sure that we spent, that we made those investments in infrastructure and we put people to work. We did that knowing that our promise was to balance the books by 2015 and 2016 and then start paying down the debt. So we've done exactly that. We've kept our promise and in fact, we not only balanced our books this year, but we balanced them ahead of time. Thank you, Ms. Ambler. Peter Fonseca, Liberals. Well, the Harper government racked up $150 billion worth uh, of debt. And, and today, we're 160,000 fewer jobs for Canadians than when they took government. So what, the, what we have said is that we, we are going to invest in our communities. We are going to create jobs, and that through, is through our historic infrastructure program that will be investing in what we've just talked about with uh, transit initiatives, affordable housing, uh, public infrastructure. All of this will help create jobs here locally and kickstart our economy. Thank you, Mr. Fonseca. Chris Hill, Green Party, please. Well, the Green Party would not have got involved in spending billions of dollars in a war in Afghanistan for 10 years or in regime change in Libya that cost further millions of dollars. It would not have spent millions of dollars on partisan advertising to advertise something like Canada's economic action plan. And we would not be planning to spend more money celebrating Canada's 150th birthday than we spend on education for First Nations. Thank you, Mr. Hill. And finally, Green Con, NDP, please. Sure. So the NDP uh, party is committed to investing uh, in infrastructure. We've talked about that. We've also said that we want to ensure that um, supporting our families and lifting them out, po out of poverty is very important. So not only are we investing in infrastructure, we're also introducing a fiscally sound social programs, specifically our $15 a day child care program. We've talked about affordable housing as well. Um, and these are all opportunities for us to not only support the debt um, and, and, and grow the economy, um, but also to address the needs of the people that are at right here in Mississauga. So let's take a minute and talk about that infrastructure debt, Ms. Adler. Uh, in fact, we've, our economy has been able to create 1.3 million net new jobs since the depths of the recession in uh, 2009, and the vast majority of them have been full-time uh, in the private sector and well-paying. Uh, now that's the equivalent. Could jump in. Well, I don't know where Miss Ambler is living because I go door knocking every single day, and all, all I hear about is how people are out of jobs. Many of our young people, even middle-aged people, are not able to to find a job. And the number is that uh, since the Harper uh, government uh, came into power in 2006 till today, we're 160,000 less jobs Ms. here Cohen? in Canada. Absolutely. Well, well, the Harper Conservatives have certainly not created more jobs. I don't exactly understand that either. Um, I'm meeting people at the doors as well, and they're saying the same thing. They're unemployed, they don't have jobs, and on top of that, we don't have good social programs either. To be able to support people. I wish all the other parties would look at some of the places that have closed in southern Ontario and make some of their announcements there in front of Stelco and Hamilton, largest steel plant in Canada, closed in front of the H.J. Heinz plant in Leamington, Ontario, in front of the Lear plant in Kitchener or the Kellogg cereal plant in London that have all closed, all those okay, jobs thank gone. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Hill. All right, let's circle back uh, with regards to affordable housing, and we'll take our next question from Ms. Anita Stolinko. Thank you. On any given night, there are between 169,000 and 195,000 individuals in Mississauga and throughout Peel region experiencing poverty and struggling to afford housing. What is the role of the federal government in reducing poverty, and what will your party do? 
Let's start with uh, Peter Fonseca, Liberal Party. 30 seconds, please. Well, well, that's a great question, Anita, and thank you so much. And you know what, and, and it hurts everybody when we see somebody on the street or not able to put a roof over their head. And what the, the Liberal Party has said is we're going to invest in our people. So we're going to actually be able to provide to families here in our community uh, more money through our Canada Child Benefit, and that will lift about 315,000 children out of poverty. Along with our affordable housing strategy, that will really uh, give a quality of life to families that don't know it today. Thank you, Mr. Fonseca. Chris Hill, Green Party, please. Indeed, if we're genuinely committed as a nation to the goal of eliminating poverty, then the time is overdue for a truly innovative initiative here, a guaranteed livable income. The Green Party's guaranteed livable income is a version of the so-called guaranteed annual income. The principle is to establish an income floor below which no Canadian could fall, but with incentives for recipients to continue working and to earn more. Thank you, Mr. Hill. For income, NDP? Sure. Um, thank you for the question. Uh, we are committed to making sure that we lift uh, people out of poverty, as I've mentioned before. I've worked with the United Way. I've had to uh, experience that myself. And it's important. It's important to invest in our young people. We've talked about you know, $50 million, 50 million going into leadership programs for young people to specifically give them the skills that they need. And I know, having been um, a participant in the United Way program, how that has, in, has actually influenced my personal journey. Um, we've also talked about childcare, $15 a day childcare. Families can afford to pay for affordable childcare, then we don't have to worry about having, to, uh, then they're actually able to, to, Thank you. to do more than make ends meet. Thank you, Ms. Kahn. Uh, Ms. Stella Lambert, Conservative Party. To borrow a phrase from the Federation of Canadian Municipalities, we agree, agree that hometown solutions are the best solutions to a lot of problems, like the challenge of homelessness. Uh, and so we do believe in partnering. We have the uh, homelessness partnership strategy, uh, which includes a housing first strategy because um, it's actually a priority shift for, for us, uh, moving to uh, actually giving people housing uh, rather than uh, temporary shelters and helping them in that way. And in fact, uh, Tim Richter, the head of the Canadian Alliance to End Homelessness, has applauded this thank, initiative. Thank you, Ms. Andrew. Let's uh, drill down on homelessness. Uh, Peter Fonseca, you first. Well, uh, unlike the uh, Conservatives in the NDP, the Liberals will not be sending checks to millionaire families for childcare. What we're going to be doing is providing more money for families here in Mississauga that don't make as much for their children. Jump in, I'll sir. give you an average. Yeah, I, I would have to say this. I, I mean, the, the Liberals are talking about $146.5 billion of new spending. They've costed it out themselves. I don't know how they're going to pay for all of this new spending. I mean, well, I mean, the, the, uh, the question about the billion do millionaires, that's uh, quite ridiculous, actually. We're making sure that we keep um, child care, uh, you know, we keep the, the tax credits, but also ensure that we have $15 a day affordable child care. That's the important thing here, oh, is making sure it's Israel. affordable. Well, I think if we're going to base our, in, in our economic strategy on daycare spaces for, for children or on, on continually repeating the, the, reti the tired phrase that we've been the best economic stewards for the last nine years, we're not going to succeed. And thank True. you, Mr. Hill. Okay, let's circle back to the topic of transportation and infrastructure with the next question coming from Madam Mayor Bonnie Crombie. Thank you, Michael. Candidates in November, the city of Mississauga will host its first ever transportation summit called Mississauga Moves 2015. The public is invited to participate and share ideas about shaping Mississauga's future transit needs. You're not just candidates, you're also residents. And as residents of Mississauga, what are your transportation priorities for our city and how will you tackle them as a member of parliament? Thank you, Mayor Crombie. I'll go to Chris Hill, Green Party, you first. I think that, first of all, we need to be very um, conscious of the fact that automotive technology is evolving extremely rapidly, and we need to take into account before we get into massive investments into transit and infrastructure that are going to last for 40 or 50 years, we need to recognize that the dy dynamic of transportation is going to be changing. As self-driving cars become more prevalent on our roads, the whole social fabric around transportation is going to change. And transit agencies in particular need to be prepared for dealing with this. Thank you, Mr. Hill. Farine Khan, please, NDP. Sure. Well, we um, are, as a, as a resident of Mississauga, I'm certainly committed to working specifically with Mayor Crombie and the city of Mississauga to understand truly what your needs are. Um, definitely, I mean, we know that we need uh, support around transit, uh, transit and, and roads and infrastructure, and that's something that's very important to, to us. And we would make sure that we would understand your needs specifically uh, and then address those um, accordingly. Thank you, Ms. Kahn. Stella Amber, Conservatives, 30 seconds. 
our conservative government has heard loud and clear your message, Mayor Crombie, and we, we understand that municipalities need that clear and, and stable funding um, because it's about quality of life. So we, in fact, introduced the largest and longest ever infrastructure plan in Canada's history, uh, a $53 billion over 10 years, 12,000 projects. Uh, Ontario has already benefited to the tune of $12.3 billion, three times the amount that the Liberals, uh, the previous Liberal government, put into infrastructure in Ontario. Thank you, Ms. Amber. Finally, Peter Fonseca of the Liberals. The Liberal Party has a strong track record when it comes to funding transit. It started under uh, Paul Martin when he came forward with the, with the gas tax and being able to provide those monies to municipalities. And now with this historic infrastructure plan for, for transit, uh, we're talking about $2 billion a year, and any money that's left on the table from any other infrastructure program will go to the municipalities under the same gas tax formula that is be being provided right now. All right, so let's drill down. Mayor Crombie brings up an important point about transit, but what specifically is your party going to do about Mississauga? You're all talking about the political party at large. Let's, get to, let's drill down to Mississauga. This is what we're talking about. Ms. Amber. Happy to take that. There are so many infrastructure projects that we've invested in already. The transit, uh, just we want to transit. transit, so in order to help people get to work uh, sooner and faster every day, uh, we're going to be changing up and uh, the Dixie QEW interchange. That was a $32.5 million investment okay. together with the province. Uh, the Mississauga BRT, that was uh, $173 million for construction. Give us some specifics about Mississauga, please. Yeah, well, well, some of the specifics around Mississauga, we know that we have an LRT project that is being funded wholly by the province, $1.6 billion. The federal government did not step to the table, did not come to the table, and did not provide yeah. any support with funding for that project. It shows the lack of leadership that we're getting Ms. from Ms. Ottawa Ms. and Mr. Mr. Harper. I'd also like to talk about the missing link. I think that's a really great project, and I think it's very important for us to invest in that. You know, certainly uh, the LRT is another piece that the Conservative government has failed, and we are certainly, um, you know, looking at uh, just looking at discussing that. Well. And Mr. Hill, the Green Party, I think Mississauga we, Center. I think we, I think we need Mississauga Street too. I think we need to slow down a little bit on transit until we we understand the emerging technology that's coming along. Where I think we should be investing money in is in probably one of the greatest accomplishments of public works over the past century and a half which is the delivery of clean water and the treatment of wastewater okay. in our Thank communities. Uh, Anita Stalinga has our next question on the topic of affordable housing. Ms. Stalinga, please. In 1980, 2% of our neighborhoods were considered low income. Today, 45% of our neighborhoods fall into that category. In addition, 20% of children live in poverty here in Peel. The one youth shelter we have, Our Place Peel, experiences such high demand they had to turn away over 450 kids last year alone because there wasn't room. How does your party plan to combat youth homelessness? Thank you, Ms. Delinga. Green Con. Okay. Well, uh, we have spoken about the fact that um, part of our, our, our work is investing in young people and youth. And we've also talked about homelessness and housing. So we're, we're committed to increasing um, 10,000 spaces for homelessness uh, or for affordable housing in, Missis uh, in Canada, and a part of that will come to Mississauga. Um, specifically, also, we're talking about developing leadership programs and training so that youth can actually be lifted out of poverty so that we can address uh, the long-term effects of um, ensuring that youth don't get to that, to that point. Thank you, Ms. Kahn. Stella Amber? I'm glad you asked about uh, children and youth. One of the uh, cornerstones of our policy for families is our Family Tax Cut and Benefits Plan, and that is giving to every single family with children in Canada a leg up, uh, an increase to the universal child care benefit so that they can spend the money, the parents who know best can spend it where they need it. Uh, that's an extra $720 for children between 7 and 17. That's almost $2,000 a year for every child under 6. That's going to help parents look after their children and that will help youth homelessness in the long run. Thank you, Ms. Adler and Mr. Ponseca. Yeah, what's being highlighted here today with Anita's question is that we have a crisis. And the crisis, you know, we have people waiting for affordable housing seven to ten years still here in, in Peel and in Mississauga. So we need that money right now. And that's what the Liberal Party is doing. We're investing the money right now. Unlike the other parties that want to move this crisis down the road, we can't afford to do that. We've got to invest in our community. We've got to help our citizens. Chris Hill, your uh, response? We should be recognizing as well, this is not just an urban phenomenon that's confined to cities like Mississauga. This is, a, this is something that we see all across our country, particularly acute in First Nations, Métis, and Inuit communities as well. So I 
We spoke earlier about the guaranteed livable income that the Green Party would introduce into this, and this again is designed to make sure that Canadians of all ages have got a basic livable income to support them. All right, let's go to our next question. Our next question deals with transit infrastructure and federal funding. Let us go to Madam Mayor Bonnie Crombie, please. The Canadian Chamber of Commerce has said that public infrastructure such as roads, bridges, highways, water systems, and the electrical grid provide services critical to, critical to economic competitiveness, sustainability, and quality of life. Will your party commit to increasing the amount of dedicated federal funding for core municipal infrastructure for projects including roads, bridges, and stormwater? Thank you, Madam Mayor, for your question. Stella Ambler, we'll go to you first, please. Thank you. Uh, we do believe that the municipalities are best placed to decide what their priorities are. And so what we've done, uh, the gas tax fund is there. And uh, in response to municipal councillors from Mississauga who came to Ottawa, I met with them as an MP and they asked us, they said, thank you for doubling the gas tax fund. Now we want it indexed to inflation. So we did that. And more recently, we made it permanent so that municipalities can rely on that stable source of funding. So uh, absolutely, uh, we're in favor uh, and Thank we you. trust the municipalities to do what Thank they you, need Ms. to Thank you, Ms. Let's go to Peter Fonseca, please. Yeah. So the Liberal Party has committed to providing sustainable, predictive, and substantive funding. And when I say substantive, it's that we're talking about $2 billion a year that will go into, into our transit, and then also $2 billion a year that's going into our, our public infrastructure. So when we're looking at roads, bridges, uh, water treatment facilities, as well as when we're discussing the Mystic Link project and, and the GO train. So all of these projects we feel are, uh, are needed uh, to be moved on right now. We cannot wait for years to come. And it is hurting our Thank productivity you. by now moving on these projects. Thank you, Mr. Fonseca. Mr. Hill, please. The Green Party was the first of the four major parties to put out its fully costed platform. And in that, we made a promise that we would increase infrastructure spending to equal one point of the uh, HST so that, in fact, it would rise from the current level of about $5 billion a year by 25% to approximately $6.4 billion a year. And in addition to that, create an infrastructure investment bank. Thank you, Mr. Hill. Ms. Kahn. Okay, so the NDP is absolutely committed to investing in infrastructure. Um, particularly, I just want to remind both my conservative and liberal colleagues here that uh, our, our, our process will not be application-based. It'll actually be uh, formula-based, and it'll actually be consistent funding. I can tell you personally, as someone who's worked in the not-for-profit sector, how tedious and difficult application-based funding is, uh, and how, uh, you know, how there's never a guarantee that it'll be renewed. So it's very important for us that we will invest in long-term sustainable funding for the cities and work in partnership with them to address their needs. Thank you, Ms. Kong. You're watching a special edition of Crombie Connects, the 2015 Federal Candidates Debate on Rogers Television. We'll be back with lots more discussion and more questions right after this. to a special edition of Crombie Connects, our all candidates uh, 2015 federal debate here. Uh, we're going to go to our next question. It's Mr. Sheldon Leiba, who is going to speak to us with regards to economic development. More than any other factor, Canada's future competitiveness will depend on employers' ability to find workers with the skills that they need. Yet many of Ontario's employers express having difficulty in filling job openings because they cannot find people with the right skills. What's your party's plan to ensure businesses have access to the talent that they need? Mr. Fonseca, please. Yeah, that's why uh, it's a great question, Sheldon. And, uh, and training is so important for our businesses to be able to have those, uh, those right skilled workers. That's why we're investing $750 million in training, to, uh, working in, in hand in glove with, uh, with our provinces. You know, we're also investing in young people and their training so to make sure that we have co-op programs and apprenticeship programs. We often hear that young people, they finish school, they don't have the experience, and they find a hard time getting into the labor market. We want to make, make sure that we can bridge that gap, be able to provide that skilled labor to our, uh, to our manufacturers, to our businesses, so that they can be competitive. Thank you, Mr. Fonseca. Chris Hill. It, it's time to break the status quo on education in Canada and end tuition fees for college, for universities, especially for skilled trades and technical training programs. We need to be able to keep our children in the academic stream 
until they get the qualifications necessary to meet the requirements of the new economy. Mr. Hill, thank you. Uh, Ms. Kahn, please. Okay. Um, well, there's two things I'd like to talk about. One is the, uh, the fact that we need to invest in our youth, ensure that youth have actual um, skilled training that they require to be able to actually take on some of these jobs uh, because we want to keep them in Canada. Um, particularly also though, we have to look at the immigrant population and also think about what type of uh, skills they have. And unfortunately, we're struggling with the issue of foreign credentials not being recognized. That's very important for us. Uh, and, and also to know that NDP is actually committed to ensuring that young people specifically have access to paid internships. That's something that's very important to us. We want to Thank make you. sure that they're valued. Thank you, Ms. Kahn. Ms. Hamlin. Uh, we've actually been making targeted investments in this area. One that's very local example is uh, uh, $25 million uh, for a partnership with Xerox uh, to build a training center right here in Mississauga and Sheridan Park. And this is going to help create uh, well-paying jobs for many young Canadians. Uh, this is done through the Southern Ontario Development Agency. That is their mandate. It's to help uh, businesses create those jobs, those good jobs. Uh, we've also got a number of programs for apprentices specifically. Thank you. Okay, let's drill down a bit here. Let's just take a minute. Training, jobs, internship, we've all brought that up. Where do you stand in that? I'm especially proud of some of the uh, programs that we've been able to um, uh, put forward for women to encourage women to go into skilled trades. Uh, their college programs, partnerships with uh, George Brown College, uh, other colleges. Um, these are the kinds Can of uh, experiences that young people need and training. Well, education is uh, our key to success. And unless we invest in our greatest resource, and our greatest resource is not oil and gas, as the Conservatives may think, our greatest resource is our human resource. So the, the keys that we want to provide are through these training incentives and, again, these apprenticeship programs. Well, it's important for us to know that, uh, you know, the federal government and the Conservative Party hasn't really supported um, the, the creation of these jobs. I mean, we're talking about one specific um, program here in Mississauga, but, I mean, overall, jump in final many more. I think, many think more. the federal government has to stop turning its back on meeting with the provinces and the municipalities to come up with solutions to uh, the skills deficit that we have in Canada. One of the skills deficits that we have Thank is you. the lack of computer science. Thank graduates. you, Mr. Hill. Let's, uh, let's talk again about transit, infrastructure, and we'll get our next question from Madam Mayor, Mayor Crombie, please. Mississauga is moving forward with the construction of the Here Ontario Main LRT. The LRT will be linked to our MyWay bus, traffic rap bus rapid transit system and to GO train stations. The LRT is the heart of our plans to build regionally integrated transit serving people throughout Greater Toronto and Hamilton area. How will your party's transit plans help fund and build regionally integrated transit in Mississauga and throughout the GTA? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, Chris Hill, Green Party, please. I don't believe that the federal government should be directing municipalities on how to build their transit system. It should be there as a partner and be able to provide funding for municipalities to go ahead with it, but essentially it's municipalities that know what transit is going to do for their population, for their residents, and for the benefit of their local economies. Thank you. Ms. Kahn, please. Well, as I mentioned before, the Urban Affairs Ministry is something that the NDP is specifically talking about, and we want to work in partnership with the municipality, and particularly the City of Mississauga, on the LRT and also on the Missing Link. Um, both are very important, and not only is it an investment into infrastructure, but it will also create jobs and support the economy. Thank you. And then Ms. Sandler? Uh, I would say, first of all, congratulations to the city. It's uh, very good news that Metrolinx decided to uh, fund uh, this project, and um, the city uh, decided that this was a priority, and uh, that's why it went forward. So this is exactly the kind of um, project that the city is prioritizing. Um, the uh, province decided to fund it. Uh, on the federal level, we fund many projects, like the uh, bus rapid transit, as just as one example, the Clarkson and Arendelle GO stations, parking garages, all those kinds of transit programs uh, and projects help people get to work on time and Thank get you. home faster. Thank you, Ms. Sandler. Uh, Mr. Fonseca, 30 seconds. Yeah, municipalities, Mississauga knows best what's important for its citizens and how to move its citizens. And we want to, you know, help provide uh, funding and uh, substantive funding to, uh, to be able to help with a fully integrated system. We feel that we have to move uh, people, goods, services as, uh, as quickly as possible to, uh, to stay competitive. And we will continue to uh, to work with Mississauga, and we're very supportive of of the um, of the prioritized projects that Mississauga has brought forward. 
So let's talk about LRT. And Ms. Khan, you wanted to comment on Well, that? I just wanted to say that uh, with the government, I mean, it's great you're congratulating the Mississauga City of Mississauga, but the funding didn't come from the federal they, government, They didn't right? ask us for it. Oh, that's really? why it didn't come oh, from I us. Didn't, uh, no, they didn't. No, they didn't. That's not uh, accurate, I don't think. So, Mayor, so um, you can ask But her. the balanced budget is something that we're talking about at the NDP. Um, the Liberal Party is very much about wanting to spend, spend, spend on infrastructure, but the, the, the question is, you know, what kind of a deficit are you going to leave behind? Fonseca? Well, when it, when it comes to in, in investing in Canada, there's no better time. Right now, interest rates are as low as, uh, as they've ever been, and we see the crises that we have in transportation, affordable housing, public infrastructure. All of this requires funds. It's going to create jobs for, for well today and get our economy going. Well, just finally, again, I, we need to be aware of changing technology and wh how this is going to impact mass transit in the future. Transit agencies are, are notoriously slow at being able to adapt to and take into account new technology. Thank you. Okay, let's uh, switch back now. Economic development and Mr. Sheldon Liva. Do you have a question, sir? It's a common refrain from businesses that they're finding it harder and harder to stay afloat. There's regulatory burdens emanating from all levels of government, and the strain on business could worsen if there's musings about increasing corporate taxes. How would your government ensure that Canada's tax regime remains competitive and easy overall regulatory burden on business? Thank you, Mr. Liva. Uh, Ms. Khan, please, 30 seconds. Okay. Well, we have said that we would increase the corporate tax rate, but it's not unreasonable to request that it would go up by 2%. That's the average of the G7. Um, we also have said that we're going to provide investment specifically into small and medium-sized businesses to make sure uh, that we create those jobs specifically. Um, and, uh, and, and we're committed to, uh, to supporting uh, the economy in any way that we can. Thank you, Ms. Kahn. Ms. Sandler, 30 seconds. Uh, we've already lowered the small business tax rate from 13 to 11%, and our plan is to lower it to 9%. We actually disagree completely with the other parties. Raising taxes is not the answer. It never creates new jobs. When businesses are stuck with, uh, whether it's red tape or new taxes, uh, they it, it's a job killing. They're job killing taxes. Thank you, Ms. Andrew. Mr. Fonseca, 30 seconds. Yeah, we're keeping corporate taxes at uh, where they are right now. We feel that they are very competitive. But you know what? After 10 years of conservative, conservative economic mismanagement, that's left Canada as the only G7 country that has slid into a recession again for the second time. You know, we feel that we need change. We have a plan for that change to be able to provide jobs, make us more competitive, and help businesses here in our country. Mr. Hill, 30 seconds on this. We believe that uh, actually Harper's War on Science has been one of the things that's created an economic disincentive for investment in this country. The lack of uh, credible third party uh, direct evidence to support uh, decision making in this country is a, a very real deficit in terms of our approach to bringing business to, to Canada. Thank you, Mr. Hill. Okay, let's just uh, quickly dive into this. Go ahead, Ms. Amber, you were first. There are no economists who think we're in a recession now. This is nothing like 2008, 2009. There's global economic uncertainty, but Canada is actually one of the strongest countries in the G7 Khan, for job creation, deficit reduction yes, on the, all kinds of well, factors. Well, I've seen Statistics Canada actually come out with a report saying that we were in a recession, so I'm not sure uh, about that. Um, but also just want to mention that uh, the NDP is actually um, committed. To, we actually were the ones who introduced the reduction of the small business tax credit, which both uh, uh, rates, which yeah. both uh, parties actually disagreed with us on. We have slid into a recession. Ms. Ambler knows better. It was actually under their fiscal plan that, uh, that we slid into this recession. We've lost 160,000 jobs since uh, the Conservatives have come to government. We need a new plan. They have a failed okay, plan. I'm going to stop you there. I just want to get another question in. I appreciate that. But uh, it's all about rapid fire here. So let's talk uh, one final point uh, with regards to affordable housing. And I invite uh, Anita Stalin to please your question. Thank you. The Federation of Canadian Municip Municipalities is the national voice of municipal government. FCM works to align federal and local priorities, recognizing that cities like Mississauga make for a strong Canada. FCM has said all levels of government must work together on a long-term plan to fix Canada's housing crunch. How does your party plan to work with local governments to invest and expand affordable housing? So, rapid fire, who wants to jump in on that question? Okay. First of all, Anita, that, 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 that's a great question. And you know what? To, to be able to address the needs of affordable housing best, we should have all the best evidence for the municipality, for the province, and for the for the federal government. Good. The federal government has actually world, cut out our, our I live stats. In a world, uh, unlike the Liberals, where we know that budgets do not balance themselves, we're going to make targeted investments, investments that we can afford, afford to do without raising taxes. Well, I've actually looked at the uh, the Region of Peel's Housing and Homelessness Program uh, Plan, the 2014 to 2024, and you've got three objectives, and we're committed to supporting the creation of housing spaces, but also making sure that we invest in, in people. Expanding the stock of a affordable housing has to start with and focus on rental housing. 
All right, thank you. We'll, uh, we'll stop it there. I want to thank all the candidates for your answers and for your comments here today in our debate. Let's uh, focus in on our closing statements. And we're going to start with uh, Mr. Chris Hill from the Green Party, Mississauga Streetsville. Your closing statement, please, Mr. Hill. Thank you. Well, I've been privileged to be a part of this election and in going door to door. I've received a very warm welcome on uh, doorsteps uh, from residents of Mississauga. Many people comment on how able and hardworking our leader, Elizabeth May, is as the first elected Green MP to the House of Commons. But the question some people still often ask is, what good will a few Green MPs be able to do? The evidence for what a small group of MPs working in, in Parliament to create a viable House of Commons after the next election, what will most likely be a minority government, is well established by the, the Liberal government of Lester Pearson from 1963 to 1968. We're a small group of New Democrat MPs, about 14 uh, MPs under the leadership of Tommy Douglas, who weren't expected to do anything very significant at all, helped give us our national uh, health care plan, the Canada Pension Plan, and our national unemployment insurance plan. Green votes matter. Thank you, Mr. Hill. I'll now go to Mr. Uh, Fonseca, please, for your final comments. Thank you. And we have a strong liberal plan for real change here for Mississauga. It, it's a plan that's going to invest in our people. It's going to invest in our people and our families by be being able to provide uh, more funds for our families, for their children, to uh, raise 315,000 children out of uh, poverty. It's going to help our seniors by increasing their OAS and GIS. And it's going to invest in our community, when the, uh, the subject matter that we've talked about today. Affordable housing, uh, transit infrastructure, public infrastructure, all of this to help our quality of life here in Mississauga, as well as our businesses to be able to provide jobs for, uh, for our people. That's what I hear most is they need, people need jobs. Our young people, our middle class, and you know what, we've seen under the Conservative government it's been a failed plan. We've lost jobs here in, in, in our community and our country is not doing as well as it should. You know, Canada could do much better and that's what, uh, that's what we're fighting for. On October 19th, uh, the Liberal team here in Mississauga, a strong team, is asking for your support to be able to bring the real change and the, and the, and that we are looking for here in our community. Thank you, Mr. Fonseca. Uh, for Incon, please, NDP. After 10 years of the Harper Conservatives' failed plan in Mississauga, it's time for a change that we can actually trust. Uh, the Liberals are offering a plan that's very short-sighted, something that uh, is going to leave burden, uh, debt burden on the backs of our future generations, and we don't need that. What we actually need is an NDP plan, a concrete plan that will grow the economy create better jobs and invest in infrastructure, but also in so fiscally sound social programs. Those programs like our $15 a day child care program and our national housing strategy. On October the 19th, I invite you to join us and millions of Canadians across Canada as we in invest in our historic uh, election to be able to create the Canada of our dreams, and that's by electing an NDP government. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Kahn. And finally, Ms. Amber, please. Thank you again, Mayor Crombie, Anita, Sheldon, Michael, Farheed, Peter, Chris, for this informative debate tonight. Your Worship, I was proud to endorse you in the municipal election last year because I know that you are a partner we can work with. And over the past year, we have all worked very well together to deliver results for this great city. I think in tonight's debate, we've heard loud and clear that the Conservative government has a different approach than my friends in the NDP or the Liberal Party. Their approach is to make spending promises, 146.5 billion to be exact, and to run deficits. We simply cannot afford this kind of risky experiment. The Conservative government's approach is to continue to provide proven leadership, lower taxes and balanced budgets. The federal government must partner with the city in many areas and I can assure you that we will continue to make investments in Mississauga and work closely with you and your councillors to deliver real results for the people in our city. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Ambler. Uh, you've been watching a special edition of Crombie Connects, uh, the 2015 federal candidates debate on Rogers Television. I'd like to thank the candidates for being here, Ms. Uh, Stellar Ambler, Conservative Party, Mississauga Lakeshore, Farheen Khan from the NDP, Mississauga Center, Chris Hill from the uh, Green Party, Mississauga Streetsville, and Mr. Peter Fonseca from the Liberal Party, Mississauga East, Cooksville. You, the folks watching out there, you have to exercise your democratic right, and please vote on October the 19th. On behalf of our candidates, our panel, and our Rogers crew who are here today, we appreciate your participation. My name is Michael A. Charbon, and I thank you so much for watching, and don't forget to vote. Let me thank all the candidates who participated. I also want to thank our moderator, Michael A. Charbon. 
Tonight we heard an important debate about a number of issues including homelessness. And with Thanksgiving upon us, I want to remind you about the Mayor's Citywide Food Drive happening now. For more information, visit my website, mayorcrombie.ca. Thank you for tuning in, and please remember to vote. Election Day is Monday, October 19th.